This time it's all about going hybrid. How does it work? What does it do? And how to avoid those pitfalls. Let's check it out. Greetings my fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. So nice to see you and welcome back to the channel. We really do appreciate it. This week I thought I'd take a look at connecting on-premises Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. Now, as you know, and as we've discussed in the past, there is a tool called Azure AD Connect. And while it seems fairly simple that you can just download this tool and go uh, click, 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 and everything works, it's not quite so simple and there are nightmares to be had. So with a little preparation and just a little guidance, uh, in this session, I'm going to talk you through those potential nightmares and also how to avoid them. Now, this week, of course, with the events in Ukraine, I have to put my hand on my heart and I have friends over there and I wish you all the best. I send my love and best wishes and I hope and I pray that you guys are all safe. And I think that everybody should give them their support. All right. Um, so that said, OK, um, let's move on to the demos. And this week, I've got some fantastic demos. So I'm going to talk about uh, Azure AD preparation. So again, some of the things that can go wrong. I'm going to talk about deploying the tool. And we're also going to talk about not just syncing users and groups in, but also bringing in devices as well. So if you're looking for something like hybrid Azure AD connected devices, what are the benefits of that? and also how to bring them in. So if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, don't we? Go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And we love comments, questions, and feedback. So please get that down below, and I will do my very best to answer your questions for you. So I think without any more chit chat, I think it's time for some demos. Let's take a look. So to begin my demo, I'm going to kick off here in Active Directory. And this is my Active Directory domain controller that I have on premises. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Tools and I'm going to go into Active Directory Users and Computers. Now, first up, you'll notice that I've got a bunch of users here. If I go to the IT folder here, you can, or the ITOU, I should say, organizational unit. I've got a number of users here and I've got Abby. So if I click into Abby's account and I click onto her account, you can see that I've got Abby here, although she doesn't have um, a username, it's just abby at adatum.com. Um, now you can see I do have what we call a UPN, a user principal name. Now, I'd just like to point out that this particular UPN is for demo purposes only. You would probably go off and register your own active domain name as such. Now, to do once you've registered your active do domain name and you've added it into Microsoft Azure, and this is something that you need, this is a prerequisite, by the way. Um, so to do that in Microsoft Azure or Microsoft 365, I'm simply going to go into the admin center here. And within the admin center, I'm going to come down. You can either go into the 365 admin center and go into setup, or you can actually go into um, Azure Active Directory here as well. So for the purposes of this little demo, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, scroll down here and I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory. Now in here, you can see that I've got uh, uh, in here, I'll go into Azure AD. And if I scroll down, um, one of the things you want to do is you want to, first of all, add in your custom uh, domain name. So you can see here that I've got some funny numbers here and this represents my tenant. Now, when you create an Azure or a 365 account, you can pretty much call it anything that you want. So Joe Blogs, 
uh, dot on Microsoft.com. The thing is, it doesn't mean anything. It's only a tenant ID. So imagine uh, the C drive on your computer. So the C drive is Azure Active Directory and each folder represents each customer or tenant. So tenant.onmicrosoft.com. Now, it's highly unlikely that you will want or your users will want a username like this. Um, so Andy at tenant.onmicrosoft.com. The chances are you probably want to purchase your own domain name. So to do that, you can, once you purchase your domain name, if you add it in here, you'll then need to verify this. Now, if you're not sure how to do this, if you have a look at the links in my video here, I recorded a previous session on DNS, which shows you exactly how to do this. All right. So that's one of the first things that you will need to do. All right. So that said, what I'm now going to do is I'm, not, you, by the way, these users here are all cloud-based users. So uh, the users on premises have not been synced in to Azure Active Directory yet. All right. Now I did mention in order to get my users synced into Active Directory, there are a few things that I need to do. So the first of those things that I need to do is I need to prepare my domain. And to prepare your domain, um, there's a few things that you can do. So I'm gonna go into Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Now you can see here, and it's just purely for the purpose of this uh, training session, I'm using adatum.com. This is an internal domain name, which means that it does not uh, go on the internet. So you couldn't use this as a live domain name. But what you would do, once you've purchased your domain name that I just mentioned, you would right click in here, you would go into properties and you would add in your UPN suffix, user principal name here. So once you've done that, you'll then need to update all your user accounts. Now, again, for the purpose of this little demo, I've gone ahead and I've got what we call a little PowerShell script here. And it's actually really simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up PowerShell. So just open up PowerShell here. And I'm going to just go in as an administrator. And you can see here, set AD Forest dash identity adatum.com UPN suffixes replace our tenant dot on Microsoft.com. So that's the first thing that it's doing is it's replacing the users in the cloud with this option. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. All right. And I'm going to go into PowerShell and I'm going to paste this in to PowerShell. So this is the first thing that you need to do. All right. And that's worked. The second thing that you need to do is it says get dash AD user. So in other words, get me a list of all my active directory users, filter them in alphabetical order, go into the properties and we're adjusting the SAM account name and we're saying for each object user, set AD user, their user principal name with the same SAM account name. In other words, it's going to uh, update their user principal name. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go into PowerShell and I'm gonna, yep, yeah, you can see I just paste that in and enter this. Okay, and that's done. All right. So now, finally, I'm going to say set execution policy unrestricted. So that will now confirm that policy has gone in. And again, I'm going to enter that. And I'm going to say, which accounts do I want to update? Of course, I want to do all of them. So I'm just going to say the A for all. 
All right, so I've now done that. So I'm gonna just collapse this down and let's have a look at what's happened. So I'm just gonna refresh this page. So I'm just gonna close that window just now. I'm gonna go into tools and Active Directory, users and computers. And here is my ITOU. Here are my users that I'm gonna sync into 365. And in here, I go into account and look. So we can now see that my users have been updated with their on Microsoft.com account. So it's updating their tenant account. So obviously because we can't, you can't log into the internet with an ADATUM account, but I've updated them with the tenant.onmicrosoft.com account. All right, so I'm gonna click OK and all of those users have now been updated. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install Azure AD Connect. Now, we're talking about potential hybrid nightmares. And one of the biggest nightmares is this. So if I go into my 365 portal, once my users start syncing through, which I've not set up yet, they'll start appearing here. Okay, now the problem here is that if I've got users here in the cloud, then authority, if you understand, is with Azure Active Directory. So those users are stored in Azure Active Directory. In a hybrid scenario, your users are essentially coming in from Active Directory on-premises. So in this case, Active Directory is the source of authority. So you create users here. You change passwords here. You make group membership changes here. Do you understand? And this pushes it out into Azure Active Directory. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, um, just a couple of things, potential things before we install. Things that can go wrong. Um, too many admins. So uh, again, you want to make sure that you, you reduce the number of administrators and also, the general rule of thumb is you shouldn't have any more than five global admins in the cloud or any less than two. So one of the things about Active Directory, you've probably had it 20 years. It's probably pretty old. You definitely want to go in here and clean up any old user accounts. So remove any old stale accounts and avoid any overprivileged accounts because that potentially could be a security weakness. Um, a major gotcha, um, I have to say, is this. So if I'm going to go into, let's say, Active Directory Administration Center, um, I mentioned that once your user objects start syncing into the cloud, and if you delete objects here, of course, if I delete, let's say, this particular user, that user is gone. In the cloud, however, what happens is the user goes into a recycle bin. So there is a user's recycle bin or deleted users, and it typically sits there for 30 days. Now, the problem is that, uh, of course, if Active Directory has authority, you delete the user from Active Directory, it will send this user into deleted items. But of course, um, if you want to restore that object, you go into deleted items and restore the user. But because um, you've not configured a recycle bin in Active Directory, you've now got the nightmare of an orphaned object, and it is a nightmare. So to avoid that solution, I'm gonna click into uh, my local domain here. And if you notice here, we have something that says enable recycle bin. Now this is an irreversible action. So if you click onto this, 
Yep, I want to click on that and that's it. And that now enables the recycle bin. And what this means is you can now um, take back a user that you've deleted from here and it will all in the same time restore it from the cloud and avoid that potential conflict. And here in Azure Active Directory, I'm just going to scroll down. And in here, it's called Azure AD Connect. So I'm going to click onto here. And we have a couple of options. You can either deploy an agent-based sync tool, which is Azure AD Cloud Sync, which is pretty nice. Um, it does have a few limitations, though, so be careful with that. The full-blown version is called Azure uh, AD Connect. So this is the one I'm going to use and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to download this particular tool just now. So this is downloading. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that file. Now let's just minimize all of this just now, make it nice and tidy for us and let's see what we've got. So this is Azure AD Connect, just a couple of gotchas. The minimum requirement is Windows Server 2016. It no, it's no longer supported on Windows Server 2012 or 2012 R2. First up, I go ahead, I click on the license and I click on continue. You've got a couple of options. You can either go use the express settings or there's a, a customize option that you can use. Um, so the user express settings will go off and they will choose kind of the best, kind of the easiest options, if you will. Um, for the purpose of this demo, you can also specify a, your own custom location. And um, as part of the install, it installs a SQL Server Express edition. Now, SQL Server Express can handle 100,000 objects in a database. So be careful if you're a very large company, you would probably want to point this to your own dedicated SQL Server. Um, it's considered good practice to use a service account with this. And uh, again, if you want to specify a custom sync group, you can do that. Um, if you've um, had synchronization tools in the past, you can also import those um, kind of synchronization settings. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to ignore those just now, and I'm going to click on install. And this will go off, and you can see it's installing some prerequisite tools. Um, and there we go. Okay, so here we can choose the user sign-in options. And currently we have a number of options. Password hash synchronization. So essentially, what does Azure AD Connect do? Well, uh, what it does is actually syncs user accounts from on-premises Active Directory. Now, it, of course, a directory is a database. So it takes the objects of the database and one of the attributes that it syncs is the password. But of course, it would be very bad security to sync passwords. So what we do is we use something called password hash sync. And a hash is a mathematical process which produces a fixed output. So it essentially does this twice using a SHA-256 hash. And then it does something called salting. So it adds a random number on the end to make it completely unique. So what it does, it then copies that value into the cloud. So the idea is when the user logs in, enters their password, it compares the hash value that they have with the hash value that's stored in Azure. So at no point does a password ever get... Um, so at no point does a password ever get across the wire. Another one is pass-through authentication, or PTA. So PTA um, is actually a replacement for this. This is ADFS, or Active Directory Federation Services. It's a very expensive solution that provided single sign-on. So this is the very, very modern, lightweight version of doing that. So if you've got an organization that's got um, 
Windows 10 machines or Windows 11 machines that are domain joined, then it will provide single sign-on for you. Please note that you can also get single sign-on with this solution as well for corporate users. And in this example, I'm going to go ahead and click this option. Now, um, if you change your mind, don't worry. You can go back in, you can open the tool, and you can uh, easily change it if you want to. So again, it now asks me, as I said, Azure AD Connect. It's a connector. So it's now looking for my... Uh, connection options so I'm gonna put in my administrator here and my password solution and I'm gonna go ahead and click on next okay so now you can see it's picked up our domain um, and by the way if you had multiple forests they would be listed here and I could then add them so now when I click on add, it's gonna now prompt me for an, uh, a user that's got enterprise admin credentials. So I'm just gonna pop that in here. And let's just put in the password. And it should all go green, which it does. Okay, so now that's the two sides connected here. So I'm gonna click on next. Okay, and at this point, it's asking me to verify my DNS domain name. Now, in reality, as I said, you wouldn't use these names. You would probably have your own custom domain name in here. And this is just purely for demonstration purposes. So I'm just happy with this. I'm gonna go along and say, yeah, that's fine. Now, at this point, you can filter uh, objects. So uh, it says, do you want to sync all the domains and the organizational units within your organization? Or do you only want to sync certain or selected organizational units? So if you were a very large organization, you could bring across possible, you know, you might want to say bring across managers, marketing one day and IT another day, for example. Again, for this demo, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to synchronize everything okay um, again do I want to bring across all the users and devices so at the moment yes now one gotcha here is that devices is actually disabled at this point and I'll show you how to switch that on later so now um, it gives you some options so if the system detects that you've got Microsoft Exchange then these icons would be lit up. Um, at the moment, you can see they're not. Now, just a tip, if they are with you, go ahead and click the checkboxes anyway. It doesn't do any harm. Um, if you want to do filtering, you can do that. Um, and again, um, if you've got premium Azure AD, premium Azure allows you to uh, you, for your users to write back their passwords from the cloud to Active Directory. So it allows a sync back, if you will. Um, I'm not going to click those just now. I'm just going to leave the default settings. So am I ha happy to uh, enable single sign-on? I am. So I'm going to enter my credentials. So again, I need my user uh, admin credentials to switch this feature on. So again, pretty simple, and I'm gonna click next. Okay, so we're ready to configure, and I'm gonna go off and install that now. So there we go. Um, configuration is complete, and that's it. Okay, so now you can see my on-premises, here's Abby, my on-premises users have come in. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is that they come in and they are unlicensed, okay? here. Now, if I go into Abby's account, so I'm just gonna open up her account here. Um, you'll see that she's actually got a, she's signing, her, she's blocked at the moment because of course she doesn't have a license. So one of the first things that you're gonna to want to do is of course, you're gonna to want to give Abby a license. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click onto the licenses tab here. I'm gonna give her an E5 license 
and an EMS license. And I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Now, one really important thing that you probably want to do is set the location for the user because this is specifies where their data is going to be stored. And if you set the wrong location, again, a potential nightmare here. Now, the demo tenant that I'm using is in the US, so I'm happy to accept that now. So now you can see that Abby is, she is uh, synced. I'm going to unblock her sign in and she's now ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to say, yep, yeah, take that little checkbox out. I'm going to save the changes and Abby is good to go. She is now an active user in Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory. And you can see she's good to go. So the final piece of the puzzle is I've got my users in, Abby's in, she's licensed now, so she can sign in. Yep, yeah, all looks good, but there is something missing. So in here, you can see I've got some computers. So I've got three machines in here. And how come they haven't signed or how come they haven't connected? It's because you haven't switched them on. So to switch this feature on, you need to switch it on in a couple of different places. So the first of those is actually I'm going to go into Server Manager. I'm going to go into Tools and I'm going to go into Group Policy Management. So here in Group Policy, I'm going to go and into here, I'm going to expand my domains and I've got my adatum.com. Let me just maximize this for you so you can see. Uh, yeah, we don't want to see that again. Um, I'm going to just maximize this. And what I want to do is I want to select the default domain policy. I'm going to edit this. All right. So here in the group policy management editor, you can see we've got computer configuration and user configuration. So I'm going to expand my policies for computer configuration. And you can see that you have something called admin templates. And if I scroll down, you can see that there's an option here for Windows components. And here in Windows components, one of the options is something called device registration. And it says register domain joined computers as devices in Azure Active Directory. Now, one of the reasons why you want to do this is you can use tools like conditional access to provide additional layers of security to your devices. You can't manage them in Intune, but you do have limited management capabilities. So to switch this feature on, I'm simply going to go into the policy and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enable this policy. OK, so that's the first place that you, you do that. Um, you switch it on and there we go. So the first thing that we now need to do is, of course, just uh, do a quick uh, policy update. So I'm just going to run a command prompt and I'm going to type in GP update forward slash force. And this will just refresh that group policy setting for me. So that's the first half. I told you this is a tale of two halves. So the other half, you need to perform this in Azure AD Connect. So one of the great things about this release of Azure AD Connect is if you make a mistake or you want to make changes, it's really easy to go back in. So all we do is we go back into configure and you can see there are a number of different options that we can choose, including configure device options. So I'm gonna click on next and you've basically got two options. Do you want to enable hybrid Azure AD join or do you want to enable device write back? Please note that you can only do one or the other. You can't have both. So I'm going to sign in with my admin account, of course. So I'm just going to put in my username and password here and it's going to ask me what do I want to do? 
Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to go ahead and I want to configure hybrid uh, Azure AD join. So I'm going to click next and I'm using Windows 10. Actually, I'm using Windows 11 devices, so that's fine. And do you want to support down level devices? So this means if you're, you've got older devices. So in this case, I don't and I'm going to click on next. Okay, so now it's detected my domain. I just need to basically provide the credentials. So I'm saying it's going from on-premises and it's going into Azure Active Directory and I'm going to add this. And it will now prompt me for my on-premises administrator credentials. So I'm going to pop that in. Now, you'll also notice it generates a PowerShell script. So if you want to use the PowerShell script, you can use that later. I'm going to click on Next, and it's now ready to configure. OK, so I'm going to click on Configure, and we're done. So just click on Exit. So the final thing is I'm going to go ahead, click back into my Azure portal, and I was obviously we want to see those devices come on in. Now, with the portals, by the way, it can take a few minutes for devices to start syncing in. But if I click into devices here, it shouldn't be too long before we start seeing things coming in. And we just need to keep refreshing the page. So there you have it, all the hybrid tools, Azure AD Connect, setting up, how to avoid the pitfalls. Let's face it, there are quite a few. Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed that session and thanks so much for stopping by. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And of course, if you're not subscribed, well, we love those as well. Click on that subscribe button, ring the bell and you won't miss out on future postings. Okay, so in the meantime, you stay safe out there and I will see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.